Well, there's been civil war at GB News. That's according to one of its former presenters, Calvin Robinson, who was yesterday fired for defending colleagues Lawrence Fox and Dan Wooten. That was after Lawrence Fox made derogatory remarks about a young female journalist on Dan Wooten's show. Well, uh, both, uh, Dan Wooten was, remained suspended and uh, Lawrence Fox uh, was also, uh, I think, removed from his show yesterday as well. Delighted to say that Calvin Robinson, though, joins me in the studio right now. Good afternoon to you. Hi, Julia. How are you? Um, I'm very well indeed. Um, probably better than you right now in terms <laughs> of where you are. Um, I'm good. I want to talk about this. I'm not, I'm not a fan of people attacking other uh, broadcasters. Mm. I've, I've not, never understood why people feel the need to do yeah. that. Um, it, it, apart from the BBC, because I have to pay for it. Um, people have a choice whether they watch our channel, your channel, or any other, or old yeah. channel, or any channel. Yeah. I want to talk about the, the issue of free speech mm. more generally. Because um, there's been a big row about you know, what Lawrence Fox said yep. on the show about the female journalist, Ava Santino, whether or not he would or would not go to bed with her. Mm. I, I thought outrageous and, and uh, irrelevant and told him so sure. myself yeah, in yeah. No uncertain terms, privately and publicly. Um, we saw immediately demands for them to be, for Dorrance Fox and Dan Wooten to be, to be sacked. Yeah. Immediately demands for GB News to be taken off air. Yeah. What did you make of that, that, that immediate reaction to that affair? That was very telling. When we've got other broadcasters saying, close the whole thing down, GB News should not exist in the first place. Broadcasters and journalists should be saying, we need a difference of opinion, we need a broad spectrum of views, this is a good thing. What, and we can say that whilst also saying that what Lawrence said was wrong. I told him to his face as well, what you said was wrong. You didn't need to say that. She's a known misandrist. You could have defeated her argument. You know, it was about men's mental health, an important issue. Get that out there. Don't stoop to her level with ad hominems. That defeats your whole purpose. Yes, but, argue with what she had to say, yeah, which the definitely idea, should have been her. argued with, yes. rather than whether or not her, her hold, attractiveness or sexual attractiveness is utterly irrelevant. irrelevant. But you can hold both opinions at the same time. You can yeah. think what he said was wrong, but also GB News needs to exist because we need a different perspective. Yeah. And in terms of the demands, again, like, you know, the, the retribution against someone who wrong speaks, mm. even if we think that what they said was wrong, yeah. uh, and the retribution against the channel, what did you make of the contrast where we had, you know, Jimmy Savile and his outrageous revelations after his death, which should have come out before, yeah. where we, we, we've learned so much about the BBC, not only some of this happened on BBC property, BBC executives couldn't possibly have not known about what was going on, um, covering it up, covering up investigations into his actions. Yeah. There didn't seem to be any calls for the BBC to be shut down. Russell Brand, now those are still allegations, he has mm -hmm. denied those allegations, uh, appearing regularly on Channel 4 and some other channels. I haven't heard any demands for Channel 4 to be closed down. Philip Schofield on ITV, yeah. big question marks about some of his behaviour. He's left mm. the show. Haven't heard anyone demanding that ITV is shut down. What's the contrast? Why is it so different when it comes to a channel perceived to be on the right? That's very good. It show, that shows the hysteria there and the, the hypocrisy. Because BBC have had people like Jimmy Savile who have been caught nonsing and the channel hasn't been closed down. However, Lawrence says something misogynistic, the whole thing should be closed down. I don't think anyone believes that misogyny is worse than nonsense. But the issue here is that GB News <laughs> speaks for the centre-right. It speaks for the, an alternative perspective. It speaks for the silent majority, or should be doing. And that's what the left hates. That's what the metropolitan liberal elite hate. And why do so many people hate that? Like, you know, you, you have, you've critical, you've been publicly critical, and you've lost your job yeah. at, uh, at GB yeah. um, as a result of your public criticism of colleagues and management. And that's... That's, a, that's, I think, a personal issue there. I, sure. I think in terms of speaking to the wider debate, um, we had a debate on Newsnight last week. I was actually invited on that debate, right. but I was getting up at 4.25 the next morning. I went, mean, got to yeah. be honest with you, I don't think I want to be in a BBC studio until half 11 at night, with all no. due respect. Um, but, but they had three people on, including mm. an MP, a, a very, very well-respected, well, you know, well -respected, well known journalist, Adam Bolton, um, and, and they had a debate, in inverted commas, about what should happen to GB News, and all three of them agreed yeah. it should be closed down. Which is fascinating, seeing three people on a panel all agreeing, saying that another show doesn't have enough diversity of thought and opinion. The, the hypocrisy, there's no self-awareness to see that. It's troubling to me. But this is the problem. Broadcasters, journalists should all be standing up and saying, we need to support free speech and the free press, and that includes views that we disagree with. And why do you think they're not? Because I think there's an approved narrative. We've seen this. You know, everyone's terrified of Ofcom coming down on them. We need regulation, of course, to some degree, but everyone's terrified of what they're going to, what the consequences are going to be, including, you know, places where I've worked. Mm. I, mean, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, look, we, we here at Talk, uh, we were just talk radio, um, did, weren't in vision. I remember it, we weren't in vision because I was sitting there having COVID, uh, you know, at home with sitting in my pajamas yeah, yeah. doing the show uh, from a, the spare room. Um, 
it, we, we face an extraordinary amount of pressure mm. uh, for speaking about concerns about policy on lockdown and, frankly, crazy yeah. uh, COVID measures about attacking, you know, vaccine passports mm. and, and so many of the restrictive measures we believed were... Well, I, I believed in some of my other fellow presenters. Not everyone. We weren't all... Again, yeah. perfectly, perfectly happy to I have people be. not all having the same opinions as many other channels are. Um, and, and yet we were massively under attack. We had our YouTube page taken down mm. uh, by Google uh, at one point for three perfectly reasonable interviews with, with eminent scientists discussing what was eminently sense, you know, an, you know, only reasonable scientific debate. Yeah. Um, the Ofcom has an awful lot of... A lot of people aren't aware quite how strict some of those Ofcom rules are, oh, yeah. even when it comes to things like discussing issues like climate change. Ofcom has decided in its infinite wisdom mm. that climate change is settled science and must therefore not be debated as a, a as freely as you would debate yeah. any other issue. How scary is that? We saw the same thing over lockdown, didn't we? You couldn't question or undermine public health bodies. That word question in there terrifies me because everything should be questioned. That's the purpose of the press, to hold the powers that be to account. And we've seen that we don't actually have free speech in this country. What happened with my friend Lawrence this week, being arrested for talking on social media about an issue, that people have been on broadcast media. You know, Chris Packham was on Channel 4 saying, well, pretty much inciting people to break the law, saying, let's blow up these gas pipes. It's, it's time to take he, the law he into actually, our own hands. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Look, look, this is the contrast. Lawrence Fox, yeah. on, on, on social media, was talking about praising the, the Blade Runners. We're going to be talking to one of the, the, uh, the oh, US Canberra Blade Runners uh, a little bit later in the show. Um, and, and basically, I mean, quite openly inciting yeah. people, you know, telling people to, to, to go and, you know, go and, you know... Uh, Break, you know, break these cameras and in, endorsing this. But as you say, actually, a Channel 4 documentary, house. Chris Packham, it was entitled, Is It Time to Break the Law? Investigating the methods of activists like Just Stop Oil. And in another interview, he has really quite openly saying breaking the law is the ethically responsible thing to do. The double standards throughout the media is astonishing. You know, we, we had Douglas Murray on this station, quite rightly, you know, testing the boundaries. With He's, Piers Morgan. Yeah, he, he said something very similar to what Lawrence said about, you know, I wouldn't shag him. And nothing, no consequences, because it was about a man. Say it about okay. a woman, it's I can't, a you can't use, can't use that language, oh, unfortunately. Sorry, sorry. I do apologise, I should have, yes. But it's very difficult. Again, it's language a lot of people use in daily life. But right. again, not acceptable on, on right. air for Ofcom reasons. So I apologise for our, our, apologize our viewers well. and listeners for that um, slip of the tongue. Um, this is the, it's, the, it's the double standards that people are upset yeah. by. Do you want everyone to be held to the same standards as, as you know, say, I am or you have been uh, at our various channels? Or do you think actually there should be a, a relaxing of the standards generally? I think both. I think everyone should be held to the same standard, but those standards should be relaxed. And what I'm worried about now that the online safety bill has passed is that Ofcom are going to have jurisdiction over the internet too, which means that even places like YouTube and Rumble, which people see as a free speech haven, are going to be clamped down upon with the same kind of ideology that if you step away from the narrative, you're punished, but if you're on the narrative, you're not punished for saying exactly the same things. Yeah, and that is things. I think some of the things, even though, like, say, the Prime Minister said, hey, you know, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Yeah. You said that on Twitter before Elon Musk yeah. uh, took it over. Yeah, that was it. I used to always have to say a biological male and saying, instead of saying a trans woman is a man, because that would have been a breach. But we shouldn't have to play these games. We should be able to say the truth as we know it, as we've always known it. You know, it, ch it changed very recently. So if something's changed that rapidly, they should give us a bit of a leeway, I think. And it, cha it changed without... I don't know who decided it was going to change. So you say the, the media, the political, the cultural elite said... Yeah. These are the rules now right. on, on, on issues of, I don't know, trans, net zero, climate yeah. change, uh, religion. Uh, uh, these are the rules now. For now? I don't... Yes, for now. Well, they'll have changed. Look, I'm on air until right. three. They'll have changed at five <laughs> well, past it. three. Do keep up. But let's think, who... Who authorised them to change them? Exactly, nobody. J.K. Rowling got caught in this trap. She was woke until she wasn't. Gary Lanaham got caught in the trap. He was woke until he wasn't. It's constantly shifting. It's a snake that eats itself alive. We'll all get. We'll all be caught in the end. Unless we stand up against it. Yes, we'll all be caught in the end. Russell Quirk is listening to all of this. Where are you on this? Uh, well, I think there's two debates going on here. So one is freedom of speech, so-called, as Calvin mm. says. Maybe it doesn't exist perhaps as much as we would like it to. Um, you know, I'm I'm a libertarian, so I think that you should be able to say pretty much what you like. You want uh, like sort of an American First Amendment law? Yeah, because I also think that we shouldn't insult the intelligence of the public mm. in the street or by way of broadcast and uh, try and... 
uh, try and kind of second guess what they are influenced by. I think the public are intelligent enough to know whether they're being influenced or not. They're, they're not silly. Yeah. But I think that's one debate. The other de debate, of course, is around Ofcom itself and whether Ofcom actually, dare I say, is fit for purpose. Mm. Who polices Ofcom? That's yeah. what I want right. to know. Who polices the police? Yeah. Exactly. Um, Those standards aren't the same. You know, the BBC doesn't have to go direct to Ofcom. They can have their internal investigation. If you want to make a, yes, if you want to make a complaint to them, you have to go, well, yeah, I mean, there, there, there are lots of things that never actually come to fruition in terms of Ofcom. But I mean, right. I, I, can say, I can certainly recall having to spend two days adminning the fact that I, there was a question mark uh, over a, um, a debate I had on air once uh, where I was telling the, 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 the person uh, who I was interviewing, they were talking about uh, tampon VAT. Oh, yeah. And they, they kept saying that people who use who have periods and use tampons. And I said, women. I said, women and girls. And they said, well, mostly. I said, no, only women and girls. And that was the subject of an Ofcom <laughs> query. Yeah, yeah, it didn't become a full complaint. But I'm saying the fact that anyone should spend, the fact that I had to spend any of That's my insane. time dealing with that, I really resent. So, OK, so what's the answer? Because you say you've got the online safety bill. That's kind of... That's, I've tried to talk about that as much as I can on the show, but every day there's another big topic, there's another big topic. But it come, it, one of the things I've been more and more aware of since I've been doing my show here and talk at different times of the day, but mm. is that is that actually, any, whatever it is you care about, whatever you're concerned about, yeah. you, everything comes back to the right to be able to talk about yes. it. And, and we don't... Are the, right, the, the parameters of debate are getting narrower yeah. and narrower and narrower. Right. So this is an area that we might disagree because it comes down to morality versus legality. For example, what Lawrence said wasn't illegal, but everyone deemed it immoral. Mm. And where does that moral compass come from? I just thought from? it was rude. Right. That's all I thought. But, it's just rude. But it, broke, it crossed a line for a lot of people, and that line wasn't the law, is my point. And Ofcom is supposed to say, as long as you're within the law, you're fine. Mm. But we do need, as a country, a moral compass. We do need to say, actually, no, that crosses the line too, even though it's illegal. And I would say that comes from our Christian faith. But without the faith, we're, it's abstract. We're, yeah. we're clenching at straws. Yeah, I mean, I'm, look, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong atheist, and yet right. I, I completely accept that our, our culture is entirely based on the Judeo-Christian culture. And, and, and you know, yeah. that's the moral basis and the, the practical basis for our, our, our laws and our... How our, how our society functions. Right, because I would say, you know, it's inappropriate for a man to be demeaning towards a woman because women are seen as the fairer sex and men are supposed to be providers and protectors. But even that, you know, some feminists might say that's quite misogynistic. Some. and Right. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but, the, but everyone was upset with it, but nobody could articulate why. That's my point. But when preachers, for instance, who are preaching actual words of the Bible are being arrested I know, I know. and people are being arrested just for stating facts Not like men can't now. become women and women can't become men. Julia, my friend got arrested for silently praying in her head. That's how she scary didn't even it is say getting. the words out loud. The no. police officer asked on video, yeah. "Are you praying in your head?" Right. Russell Quirk, final word to you. Yeah, I, I just think that we can understand why the public, those of us on the centre right, think that this is the beginning, maybe even the middle, of a very hideous, slippery slope. Um, and I think we need to be very, very careful, uh, particularly given the the huge vocal minority, the noisy vocal minority oh, on yes. social media, uh, that we don't end up in a place that resembles China. I, I genuinely worry that people are going to wake up far too late. Um, great to have your comments, Russell. We'll come back to you. Uh, Calvin Robinson, great to have you in the studio. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. Well,